created in our database. In this case, in Goldmine's case, it's called the create on date. And this is actually very easy. We're going to create a formula. So I'm going to go to my field explorer. I right click on formula fields and select new. Whenever I create new formulas, and I guess maybe I'm just fastidious about this, I always prefix my new formulas with FRM lowercase and then the formula name. In this case, I want to call it record age. The reason why I prefix that with FRM is because once I get a big fucking huge crystal report and I have a bazillion formula fields here uh, and like just a lot of objects to deal with, the FRM kind of asks me to recognize what's a formula and what's not. So again, whenever we're creating a formula within our scary formula editor, we always want to keep in mind what we're doing. We don't want to get, you know, unfocused. So we want to know how many days have passed since this creation date. Okay. So what we have to do is, well, let's get this field in here first. We know we have to deal with this field, so how, how are we going to do this? I want to take a greater date and subtract a lesser date from it. That's how date math works, or at least date subtraction works. So the create on date is in our past. That's the lesser date. So I want to take that away from the bigger date. In this case, I want to use the current date. The current date is always going to return today, no matter when the report is run. It's always going to grab today. Check my syntax, no errors found. So it's just that easy. I'm taking today's date and subtracting the create on date, and what we get, or should get, I'm going to hold my breath, is the number of days that have passed since that day. And at, why does it give you the number of days instead of the number of months or years? I, I honestly couldn't tell you, but the days is the default. Now I want to go ahead and I want to right click and format my field, maybe get that decimal out of there, make it look a little better. Okay, great. Uh, another way to do it, and this is the best part about using uh, formula fields in Crystal, is that when I want to operate on a formula field within the report, especially if the report is huge and complex, we don't really want to play too much with the objects in there. We want to go right here and edit our formula right here. And instead of doing this very simple today's date minus the creation date, we can actually do it the more complicated way and use what's called the date diff function, which will let us get, like, for instance, number of months and years and so on. So in order to use this crystal function of date diff, and where I found that, was actually underneath my date time function tree. And what the date diff function does is it, it, it gives us an interval, the number of intervals that have happened between this date and that date, interval type being a uh, choice. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our date diff function. And the first parameter it wants is the interval type. I'm going to tell you right now that D is days. And comma, our first date is the start date time. Well, our start date time, the lesser date, is our create on. And our greater date is today's date. So I'm, I'm going to generate what is the date difference between the create on and today's date expressed in days is all this formula is doing for us. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and make sure that it still returns the same number as before it does. But now that we're using that date diff, function. I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit this. I can return now month by just putting in M. I believe it's just a single M. And there you go. Number of months. Also, you can imagine that if I want to get the number of years, Y is the appropriate. Oop, maybe not. Maybe it's four Y's in a row. You see that a lot. Yes. Okay. So if you want years, it's for whatever reason, it's four Y's in a row. But the date diff function gives you the ability to choose what interval. And if you guys want to look up what other intervals, intervals are available, just Google Crystal Reports date diff and you'll find more than you ever wanted to know about it. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to change this back to days. And okay. Okay, so what we have here are three records, um, one of which was created, is that today? Yeah, that is today. 
uh, and the other two created uh, at least 300 or more days ago. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to go into my select export. I'm going to release all the constraints out of my select export. I want to look at the whole data set again. And then we can see that our age is calculated regardless of what state we're looking at. What we're going to look at now is um, well, yeah, we're going to try this whole counting records thing again and hope I can do it right this time. No worries. What I wanted to show you is that sometimes simply counting records on a report isn't enough. So you might have a boss which could say to you if you're looking at this report, well listen, I want to know how many New York records are more than 300 days old. And I want to know how many PA records are more than a hundred days old, let's say. We'll make it complicated. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, here, here's the rub. He wants to see both of those totals on the same report. So he wants to be able to look at all, he wants to look at both New York and Pennsylvania records on this big report, but at the end he wants subtotals based upon conditions. So you, you, you can't trick your summaries by just providing a selection criteria because you need to look at both PA and New York states, right? I hope you get where I'm going with this. So management wants to see um, how many New York records are older than 300 days and how many PA records are younger than 300 days, let's say, just to make it easier. All right, so how do we do that? Well, huh. This actually is a bit of a conundrum because when we insert a summary, it's just a stupid summary. It, it's just, it, it's getting whatever the report is passing on to it. There's no selection going on there at all. Um, one uh, option actually is to use a, a running total field, which is actually a super ultra mega summary. We're not going to get into that today. I'm going to show you an even sneakier trick. Okay, so let's think about what we're trying to do. Uh, our, in our first instance, we're trying to see how many New York records are uh, older than 300 days. We're actually going to do this with a formula. I'm going to create a new formula. I'm going to call this my New York test. This is just so cool. I hope you guys love this as much as I do. Okay, so again, the boss wants to know how many New York records are older than 300 days. So this is easy. So my little New York test formula is going to test for these things. So it's going to say, okay, um, if my state is equal to New York, and if my record age is greater than 300, then one, otherwise, or else, zero. I check my syntax. I'll explain why I did that in just a moment, but I want to show you how it looks on the report. Whenever I'm dealing with formulas, uh, real estate is always at a premium in Crystal. Let me move this stuff over. Incidentally, I'm doing that by just tapping my arrow key. Best way to move stuff in Crystal. All right, so now that I have my New York test formula, oop, I'm going to drag that over onto my detail section. And remember, the New York test formula is actually testing for things. And if things are true, then it's kicking out a 1. Otherwise, it's kicking out a zero. In some cases, not kicking out anything for the uh, for the instance where records have no state. It just doesn't know what to do, so it's returning a null. But the important part here is that when my New York test passes muster for any particular record, I get a one. So let's go ahead and make a PA test. So I'm going to make a PA test. Oops. PA test formula. And uh, as you would imagine, this is going to test for our PA stuff. So it's going to say if my state is equal to PA oop, and my record age is less than 300, then 1, otherwise 0. And I'm going to drag this into my report. Do you kind of see what's going to happen now? Okay, so I have these formulas testing. 
And if a record passes the test, we get a one. Otherwise, we get crap. We get a zero or a null, which is fine because we're only worried about the ones, right? So now that we have this formula working for us, these formulae working for us, we can go ahead and insert some, hopefully, sums on it. So now that we have these formulas returning a bunch of ones and zeros, what we're going to do is we're just going to add up all the ones, right? So I select my New York test formula and I want to sum it and I want a grand total field. And there we go. Is that right? Are there only two? Well, there's one here. Remember, they had to be in New York and, let, and over 300, so there's one. And there's my other. Or, no. Oh, there it is, right in front of me. Okay, so that is right. Okay, so our grand total here. Again, what I'm trying to show you guys is that, and now we're going to, uh, before I explain what's going on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert another summary for my PA test. And, oops. Select your field, PA test, and then select your, your operation. In this case, it's going to be a sum, and I want to insert a grand total. And there it is. Okay, so what this allows you to do, what this is allowing us to do is count in very, very, very tricky ways what's a New York record and what's a PA record based upon what the boss wants, right? Because the boss is concerned about record age. He's concerned about all sorts of other stuff. But he also wants to see both New York and PA records on the same report. So we can't just use a select expert. We can't just, just cut out what records we want to count. We actually have to create these formulas. And now that we have these little NY tests and PA test formulas, now if you think about it, these formulas can be whatever you want them to be. They can be the, the wickedest, most blazonest selection criteria in the world right here. And again, at the very end of the day, the summary, which is just, keep in mind, a stupid crystal summary, all it's doing is counting the ones. That's it. And that's going to give you the number of NY test records and the number of PA test records. Uh, that's actually, uh, I use that absolutely all the time. I will go this route much, much faster than I would say use a running total fields. Running total fields have their own certain set of problems and certain set of uh, advantages, I might add. But in this case, uh, counting ones and zeros that are being kicked out of a formula, you see it everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Uh, at this point, we are pretty much out of time. I'd like to invite you all to hit star six to unmute your lines and hit me with any questions or comments you might have.